Yeah. Is this her? Yeah. Yes. So, all right, so Cindy, I'm going to be introducing everybody, and I'll be introducing Bob shortly. Thank you very much, everybody. This is the first time we've shifted down over this way. So, again, welcome to Costa Mesa Connectors. I'm really happy to have you all here. So, as I told most of you in your circles, how we created this and what it was about was Laguna Niguel Connectors is down in Laguna Niguel. And so I lived in Costa Mesa, Newport for about 19 years. And um, for four years, while my daughter was going to school down there, I lived down there. And when I moved back to Newport Beach, I wanted to have something close and more convenient. So I decided to create it here. So I know it seems awkward that it's outside, but whether you want to call it organic or homegrown, it has worked very well. We had 78 people here when John Levante was here in the pouring rain. We had 150 people with our head recruiters like uh, Karen Rogger when she was here. And uh, today I'm very excited because today we have Bob Dinell. And Bob has a 30 year span of speaking and helping and coaching people. I think he's spoke to over 15, 20,000 people throughout the years. And he created what's called Connectology. And that's not just how to meet anywhere, anytime, but it's also about taking your business to the next level. Because the more you know about yourself, the more you understand who you are and what your mission is and your gifts are. And he's really honed this in, and I've had the, uh, the pleasure and the benefit to get to know him. And he's a phenomenal opportunity for us. So I thank Bob very much. So Bob, come on over here. Give him a hand, everybody. Now, Bob is not really wanting to do the tailgating. I just checked it out. My son, who's an Air Force uh, kid, uh, has these parties on the beach. So I said, oh, let me take it. Um, as you guys know, we usually are like over here in this corner. And I know this is a little different. By the way, that's Charlie the mascot. Um, uh, we moved it over here. How do you guys feel about that? We think it's the noise, the, the music's a little better. But also, because everybody, some, some people, their, their puppies on their feet get a little tired standing. So this gives everybody a chance to kind of sit. So it's a little mix. But how does that feel to everybody? Does everybody like this? Is it working? Sure. Yeah. Okay, again, let's give Bob a big hand. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, I, I hate microphones because I hate walk, I, I like to walk around, so especially confined to a microphone. But uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Okay, because I talk really loud. If you just do this, I'll uh, I'll take it as a good sign, but I'll also take it as that I need to speak up a little bit louder. Uh, first of all, you know, I, I'm I'm really excited to be here because I'm excited to be around professionals. I'm excited around to, to be around people that want to make a difference in their communities, in their lives, in their families. Uh, in, in, in their businesses. How many of you guys are independent business owners? Okay, how many work for someone else right now? Okay, what is the importance of, for you in connecting with the right types of people? How important, on a scale of one to 10? 10? Okay, if, if it's not a 10, let me encourage you to think of it as a 10 because it really is. The importance of connecting with people way surpasses what most people do called networking. Now, I'm, I'm not slamming networking. Um, I have some very good friends that train networking at a very professional level, and, and so there's, there's the utmost respect for that. Here's what I say, though. Connecting, connectology, what I teach, um, is kind of like having this plugged into the wall. There's a connection made. Networking is like if it was just sitting there and it's not plugged in. And so most people are going around and, and they're passing out business cards and they're talking to people and their focus is, let's go to as many networking events as I possibly can this month and let's meet as many people as I possibly can this month and hopefully I'll follow up with a half a dozen of them. Okay? How many guys have business cards that you have not followed up with? Be honest. You know, I mean, we all have. Now the bottom line is, what do we do to increase that? We've got to understand that how the connection was made to begin with. Most people are talking about networking. They're talking to walk into a business card and go, hey Shane, nice to meet you. So what do you do? Isn't that the number one question asked? Yes. Let me tell you this, don't ever ask that question again. Please don't ever ask that a question. Here's what it says. It reeks of insincerity. And here's what it reeks of is self-serving. Uh, self, very self-serving. Here's why I say that. If I'm asking Shane what he does, What's the, why am I asking that? And don't lie to yourself and think it's because you're building rapport. You're not. Why is it? Because you want to tell them what you do. Because you want to tell them what you do. That's a great point. Or what else? 
To see if they can serve you some, for something. What's that? To see if they can help you with something. See if they can help me. And if they do something that I can sell them, then I can sell them. So it's always about what do I get out of this relationship? <laughs> right? Isn't that the way it is? Now, I, here's, here's why most people do it though. It's not so much that, it's just because they're lazy. Most people do it just because they don't know what to do. Write this down if you're dating notes, write this down. The quality of your connections will be based on the quality of questions that you ask. The quality of your connections will be based on the quality of connections on questions that you ask. Most people are just asking the wrong question. The question, what do you do, is just the wrong question. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just indifferent. You know what, there's a, there's a great uh, quote that says that 70, 68%, I'm not sure, 78% of all business that's lost by a company has lost to an attitude of indifference. It's just that the employee that they engage with just really didn't give a damn. It's just that the employee that they engage with acted like they didn't give a damn. Whatever it is, they just got to that point where the person, the person just did not feel like they really mattered. Do you want to matter? Do you want to feel like you matter when you walk into a business? When you're having a connection with somebody, don't you want to feel like you really matter, Alan? Like that you really exist, that you're not just some figment of somebody's imagination that's just standing there waiting to be recognized. See, make no mistake, you're, the contacts that you make today and the contacts that you make from here on out are starving to death to be recognized for who they are, not what they do. They're starving to death to be recognized for who they are, not what they do. So when you walk up and you ask somebody, John, when you walk up and say, what do you do? You're, you're not feeding the very thing that is driving them to be a better person because who they are does not matter. Who you are is not important. See, that's what we say when we say, what do you do? We say that who you are is not important. But that's the opposite. Who you are is the only thing that matters. What you do is irrelevant to me. What you do is irrelevant to me. What you do just does not matter to me. Because it's who you are that determines the quality of every area of your life. I have a statement I say, who you are is more important than what you do the car you drive, the house that you live in, the money in your bank account, because who you are determines the quality of all of those things in your life. And yet most people are walking around, hi, what do you do? Hi, what do you do? As if who they are doesn't matter. You know, yesterday I was at a, a conference called the Identity Conference um, with uh, Pastor Rick Warren, who wrote The Pursuit of um, uh, Purpose Driven Life, and uh, a bunch of other people. And there were people that were talking about giving back. And there were people... There, there were people talking. About, there were people that had made millions and millions of dollars. That were saying, you know, I, what I realized that I wasn't happy. What I, what I, what I really craved inside was this feeling of contribution that I was giving back to my community. You know, I coach a guy who made a, almost four million dollars a couple years ago, and he told me, he goes, yeah, this phase of my life, I want to find out how do I, how do I take this and give back to people. I, I've amassed all the houses, amassed all the cars, amassed all the stuff. How do, I, how do I create a life that, write this down, legacy life? Are you living a legacy life? Because if you're not, what you're doing is you're building a life that is just built on sand that's gonna crumble. Now let me, let me explain why I say this. Because here's one thing I know, that your psychology, your inner, what I call your inner game, has to be strong enough to support the, the, the structure you're building on it, or it all falls down. That's why you see professional athletes that do really, really well in college. They win the Heisman Trophy. You probably know about win the Heisman Trophy, get into the pros, and in a couple of years have an emotional breakdown. Why is that? It's because their psychology, or what I call your inner game, their inner game was strong enough to support going to college, playing well at college, getting a Heisman Trophy, but it wasn't strong enough to support all the rigors that were going to come with being an NFL top-rated quarterback. You see it in business. You see people rise up, what it, what's the Peter Principle, right? When they rise up to the level of highest, least incompetence before they fall apart, right? You see it in corporate America. You see it in, 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 in solopreneurs. They, they rise up, they do just good enough, just good enough, just good enough, and then they fall. Why? Because the foundation that they were building it on was designed for one thing, and the structure they built 
with something different. If we were to take a, a foundation that your house was poured on, could we build this building on that foundation? What would happen? But even if we use the best materials, even if we had the best construction, uh, the best contractors, what would happen to the building if we built that building on your foundation for your house? Doesn't matter how good the quality is, right? It would fall down because the foundation's weak. So what I always say is we've got to begin with the inner game. We've got to begin with that foundation. How many of you want to make more connections this week? How many of you wanted to make more connections than you did last week? So why did you not do it? Here's why. It's the same reason that people say, Bob, I want to get him to go to the gym. And then they don't. It's the same reason they say, Bob, I'm going to start saving money. But then they don't. It's the same reason they say, Bob, I want to I want to start being more loving to my family and I want to start giving back, but then they don't. The reason is because their psychology won't support it. I had a client once, um, we were, I was doing a seminar and there's a guy and he says, the reason I don't um, have the sales I want is because I don't get out and make enough connections. I said, absolutely. He says, so how do I fix that? I said, well, we've got to change your mindset. We've got to change the way you think and we've got to change the way you feel about getting that result. And he says, well, what do you mean? I know it would be better. I said, what would happen if you made more con connections per day? And he says, my sales would go up. And I said, do you believe that? And he says, yes. And I said, how much would you make on an average sale? And he said, $7,000. I said, you'd make $7,000 and yet you can't get your ass up out of bed to go make more connections when you know that that would give you more sales. He goes, yeah, I guess I'm just lazy. I said, okay, well, let me just tell you this. If I gave you um, $250 for every connection that you made up to 50, how many would you make? He goes, all 50. I said, you make all 50. He said, absolutely. How many of you guys would do the same thing? If I was gonna give you 250 bucks per connection that you made up to 50, you'd do all 50, right? Do you think that if you made 50 really good connections during the course of the week, your sales would increase? Okay, so here's the deal. He says, yeah, and I said, okay, well, here's the deal. How much would you make if I gave you 250 times 50? Who does math really quick? 250 times 50. 625,000. How much? 625,000. Okay, so I'm gonna give him that, but I'm gonna take the commission. And he goes, well, well what? I said, why are you so eager to do it for $250 per, per connection, but you're not willing to do it for the 7,000? And he went, I don't know. See, he had never asked himself that question. It's kind of like a, a two-time Pro Bowl player that um, played in the NFL, and he, he came to me and he does mortgage and real estate. He comes to me and goes, I'm struggling with my business. And I said, well, let me ask you a question. I said, um, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how committed are you to really raising the standards, setting new standards for your business? Like making more connections per day. How committed? Like if we looked at your, your calendar, would there be enough evidence to con convict you of somebody who's really serious about that? And he goes, Bob, probably on a scale of one to 10, probably a four. I said, a four? I said, how far would you have made it playing football at a level four commitment? And he said, I would have never made it out of Pop Warner. And I said, so what you're telling me is that you want NFL results for Pop Warner effort. Folks, many of you do the same thing. And from time to time, I've done it as well. We, we expect an NFL result, but we're really playing at a Pop Warner level. It's time that we set new standards. We've got to raise the bar. We've got to set a new standard for how we perform our business, how we connect with people. You know, it's no longer just good enough to walk up and go, hey, Shane, nice to meet you, what do you do? And then he tells me and I tell him, and then we go, okay, great. And then someday <laughs> we hope that, you know, God just shines out upon us and puts us back in the same place and, and gives us some business out of it. That's bull, it doesn't work. You know, the way that people created business in the past doesn't work today. Today, people want connection. They want a relationship. They want to feel like as if they matter because guess what? They do. They do. I don't care what business you have. If you don't have people, your business fails. How many of you guys are in sales? And the rest of you are lying. <laughs> Every one of us is in sales. You know, and here's the problem. Most people sit there and go, Bob, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want, I, you know, I'm not a salesperson. Bullshit, you are. You are a salesperson. 
You know what? Nothing happens in life without a sale being made. People say, well, no, people just don't like being sold. I disagree. I disagree completely. You know why? Because if, what's your name? Batista. Batista. If Batista, if you had saved up all month, saved up every penny to go and buy the, that brand new pair of shoes, you know the pair of shoes I'm talking about? The one that you really want? <laughs> if that pair of shoes, if you had saved up all month for that pair of shoes, and you told all your friends, Friday, payday, I'm going to get new shoes. I'm going to Nordstrom's, I know where they're at, I know I've got the money, I'm going to buy them. Right? You'd be excited, right? Your friends would be all excited for you, or jealous, either one, right? If you go to, to Nordstrom's at lunch, and you walk in, and you walk in, and you bring the pair of shoes, and you set them on the counter, and you go, here's my pair of shoes, I'm ready to buy them, and they go, no, we're not gonna sell them to you. How upset would you be? Pretty upset, right? Because you want to buy them, but they won't sell them to you. See, the problem is we've, we've got this, this misconception about buying and selling. You can't buy anything you want in life if somebody doesn't sell it to you. You tell me the thing you want to buy, the absolute most, you can't buy it if somebody doesn't sell it to you. So you got to get this notion out of your head that you're not a salesperson. you got to get the notion out of your head that sales is bad. Sales is absolutely pivotal and it's the most beneficial thing you have because if you don't get sold, you wouldn't be wearing the dress you're wearing, you wouldn't be wearing the tie you're wearing, you wouldn't be wearing the sunglasses you're wearing. You've got to understand that we are all in a process of sales and we're all in a process of buying. And once we get clear on that, we start moving mountains out of the way that are standing in the way of us connecting with other people. Tell me somebody that you want to connect with that would make a difference in your life today. Who's somebody that you could connect with that would make a difference in your life? Me. Okay, thank you. We will do that. I promise. Who, who else? The CEO of um, One Acre Fund. The CEO of One Acre Fund. Why would that be so important for you? Um, because I'd like to work for his company. You'd like to work for his company. Have you ever met him? No. Um, do you know where he works? Yes. Do you know how to get access to him? No. Okay. Let's let's change this right now. Okay. You know how to get access to him. Okay. It's a matter of you're not doing it. Does, does, does anyone know that you know how to get access to pretty much anyone? On some level, you know how to get access to him. You may become deemed as a stalker, <laughs> <laughs> but you know how to get access to him. Well, I know we could go there. It's not, it's not necessarily access. bad. I kind of like having a stalker every now and then. We've just got to get clear. We've got to get rid of the excuse that we don't know how to approach it. You know, I've been very, very blessed. Physically get to well, there's a lot of there's a lot of what uh, barriers. A lot of barriers. I would say the biggest barrier that you have is self-imposed. Okay. Because guess what? He's meeting with somebody every day. He's doing something every day. He's not cubby holed up in his office 24-7. He's doing something. So you find out what he's passionate about, what he's driven about, what really juices him up, and you start the conversation with that. But the way you start the conversation is to know where would he be at that time. For example, if somebody wants to make more connections, here's what I tell you. Don't try and go to net more networking events. That's not the, the, the end all. The best connection you can ever make is somebody who, who is similar to you, right? Because if they're similar to you, they probably will like you to some level, some degree. Trust you to some level, some degree. So here's what I say. I talked to a lady one day and she says, um, she says, Bob, she goes, I need to make more connections. I said, let's just focus on good connections. Do you see the difference there? More, good. So I said, here, let's just focus on really good connections. So I said, here's um, what, what do you love to do? She goes, I love to ride horses. I said, how much do you ride horses? She goes, none. I don't have any time. How many of you guys understand that? I don't have any time. Okay, get rid of that excuse because it's bull. And it's challenging you because you're accepting it from your clients when they say, well, I don't have enough time. I don't have enough money. I got to think about it. If you use those excuses, you will never be willing to call your prospects on those same excuses. So I asked her, I said, forget the time. Let's just make the time. Let's carve it out this week that you're going to go horseback riding. Uh, you're going to go to the stables at least two times this week. He says, okay. She says, okay, we'll go. So two times I have her go to the horse stable. So I said, she goes, what am I supposed to do there? I said, go, clean your horses, ride your horses, come back, brush your horses, hose them down, put them back in the stall. She's like, 
I can do that. I said, why haven't you been doing it? She says, because I need to work. I said, oh, just wait. So she does this about three weeks in a row, two times a week. All of a sudden she had five new people she was talking to that she was talking to about her business. Why? Because they already had something in common. She was there and they're like, hey, so what are you doing? And she goes, oh, I'm just riding horses. She goes, how did you, how do you afford to get away from your work or your busy life to be here? She's like, oh, well, you know, here's what I do. And, and this is this is my passion, is riding my horses and spending time on the horses. I'm like, funny, that's, that's my passion too. And all of a sudden they had something to build upon. See, most of you are trying to make connections with people, but you're trying to build something on there that they that has no relevance to them. Let me give you, um, you guys know Tim McGraw? I had a great uh, connection with Tim McGraw. I was at the, at the Grammys. I work a lot with celebrities and a lot with professional athletes and CEOs of companies, but I also work with people living under bridges and dealing with drug addictions and everything else. Because what I've mastered is human behavior. What I've understood is human behavior. Once you understand and can master human behavior, you can help anyone, regardless of their education, their income bracket, or anything else. So I'm sitting there at the, at the Grammys, and um, it was a day of rehearsal. And uh, Faith Hill is up on stage um, doing rehearsal. Faith Hill is Tim McGraw's wife. Faith is, uh, is doing rehearsal. Tim McGraw and I are standing out there, and we're at the Staples Center, and there's you know a few hundred people around, it's just rehearsal. So he's standing there, and um, he turns to me and he said, hey, you got a lighter? I said, no, I don't. And he goes, oh, um, he goes, okay. I said, well, I'll find you one. So I go in, I find the lighter and bring it back to him. And he stands there and Faith is up on stage singing and he just lights the lighter and just does this. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that was so cool. You know, and it was, it was really cool. And then Faith is like singing and she looks out and she sees it and she starts cracking up. So here's this, this moment. You gotta understand that you gotta have a, a, a thing of relevance. Okay, a thing of relevance. A thing of relevance is going, going to make that connection. So. We laugh, we, you know, we make a joke, and then I don't see him for three or four years. I'm at the, um, across the street from the Honda Center, then it was the pond, standing across the street at a friend of mine's restaurant, and all of a sudden I see up on the billboard that Tim McGraw is playing across the street. <coughs> well, no later had I, had I noticed that, that all of a sudden Tim McGraw comes walking up to eat at the restaurant. He's got a baseball hat, sunglasses, and he walks up, and nobody's really noticing him. But I walk up and I walk up and I say, hey Tim, how you doing? He goes, good. I said, hey, can I tell you a quick story about something that happened with you and Faith and myself? Why did I say you, Faith, and myself? Because it's about him. Why? It's about him. It's totally relevant. Who's the most important thing in his life? His wife. So automatically, he's engaged, right? Now if I just walk up and say, oh man, I'm a huge fan. I love the last album. It was so great. Thank you so much. I'm one of a billion. There's no relevance and there's, there's nothing special about that. You've got to learn to make something special and totally relevant to them. So I, I said, you know, do you mind? He goes, no, what is it? So I told him about that story. He starts laughing. He goes, I remember that. He goes, oh, that was fun. I said, yeah. I said, hey, enjoy your lunch. He goes, cool. He goes into lunch. My clients and prospects, how many of you guys really want to like pour it on and really impress your clients and your prospects <laughs> when you're having lunch with them or something? Right? You really want to. And you're like, man, I just hope I put my best foot forward. I hope the restaurant's right. Up. So I'm like, okay. My clients show up, we walk in, we take a table across the restaurant from Tim. Tim's sitting over there, I take my business card, and I fold it up, and I, before I do, I write on the back of it, Tim, you've been such a blessing to so many people. My turn to bless you, lunch is on me. Fold it up, call the waitress over, and I said, could you just take it over to the guy in the baseball hat? She's like, sure. She takes it over, hands it to him, he looks over at me and goes, thanks, no problem. Simple gesture. Now, you don't give to get, you give with the expert, with the knowledge that you will get somewhere in time. Not always from the bank that you deposit in do you get the withdrawal. Mm. Make sense? Sometimes you deposit on the east and get paid in the west. So I always just give with the expectancy knowledge that I know I will get somewhere in the future. We don't expect it from that particular, that particular person or that particular time. But this time, I give this thing. No problem. After lunch, I see Tim getting up. My clients are still, we're still sitting there talking. Now, I haven't even mentioned to my clients that that's Tim McGraw. All of a sudden, Tim comes walking over, and he goes, hey, Bob, great to see you again. Want to introduce me to your friends? What do you think my relevancy at that table <laughs> looked like then? Do you think it changed a little? Yeah, it did. You know why? Not because of something I did, but because of who I am. Because who I am is the kind of person that will just recognize somebody and give, give a free lunch because I just appreciate who they are. That's who I am. It's not what I did. 
It's just who I am. Are you being who you are on a daily basis? Or are you being who other people think you should be? When you're connecting with somebody, if you're being anything other than who you exactly, exactly are, you will always be leading with something that will be perceived as a lie. Have you ever been talking to somebody and they're talking and you just, you, you can't prove that they're lying, but you just don't feel like they're telling you the truth either? Have you ever felt that? And you're sitting there and you're looking at them and you're just like, uh-huh, okay, yeah. And there's just this skepticism in us. It's just, it's built in. And so, here's what happened. When you, when you start off talking about something that's not 100% congruent with who you are, they will always perceive it as shady. They'll always perceive it as possibly a lie, possibly less than the truth. So the best thing I can tell you is something Roger Ailes said, who was a, a speech coach to uh, the likes of Ronald Reagan, pretty good orator, right? And he told him this, he says, you know, you don't have to focus on all the details about making eye contact and, and voice, uh, voice tonality and, and you know, voice injections and all that stuff. You don't have to worry about that if you're talking about something you're totally passionate about. See, like, I, I'll, I'll bet you, who has kids here? Okay, it, sir, what's your name? Edward. <laughs> Edward, nice to meet you, sir. If, if I were to ask you to talk about your business, do you think he would talk about his business differently than if I were to ask him to talk about his children? Do you think that he would have to think about, okay, well, I'm gonna say this right now, and this next, and then it's gonna to lead to this, and oh, I gotta make sure that I'm scanning the audience, and I gotta make sure that my handshake's firm. Do you think any of that comes into play when he's talking about his kids? None of it. You know why? Because it happens naturally. And see, that's what we're, most of us are doing. We're trying to create an unnatural thing because we're being unnatural. If you want, if you want the most impact when you're making a connection, be totally engaged in what you're saying to the point as if you were talking about your children or that person in your life that you absolutely adore and love the most, whether they're present or they've passed. When you're connecting with someone, you have to have the right understanding of what the objective is. Stephen Covey wrote a book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. In there he says what? Begin with the end in mind. You have to be clear about what's your objective when you're meeting people. I took a, I was paid a thousand dollars a day to take this salesman by a salesman. He says, look, I, I can't pay your normal fee, but I'll pay you a thousand bucks a day just to ride with my salesman for one day and just kind of point out a couple of things. I said, sure. So I go out with a salesman and I noticed like we kept going into these sales and he'd be like pushing for the sale, pushing for the sale, pushing for the sale, not making the sale coming back out. I said, so, um, you know, we've been on three or four calls now. Um, what's your objective at this next call? He says, to get the sale. I said, how's that working for you? He says, it's not. I said, we gotta start setting ourselves up to win. Part of my winning the inner game video series that I created is about winning, uh, setting yourself up to win. You have to set yourself up to win. Most people are just trying to win, but they haven't set themselves up in a place where they can. So I told him, I said, here's the deal. What I want you to do is this next call, I want you to walk in with a different atmosphere, with a different attitude, with a different objective. He goes, what's the objective? I said that you're gonna make a friend, that you're going to create some trust, some level of trust with that person, and um, and that you're going to establish some rapport. And he goes, okay. So we walk in. He does that. We walk in. I said, how did you do? He goes, I think I did really well. I said, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say you did a seven or eight. He goes, see, I did well. I said, doesn't that feel differently coming out of that sales call than the other three or four that we went on before? He goes, yeah. I said, don't you think that your best foot's now going to be better the next time you make a sales call? Don't you think that the next time you walk into that office that they're going to see you and perceive you differently? Because see, you weren't about the sale. We've got to get it clear that we, we do the process consistently and persistently, the sale takes care of itself. You know, John Wooden, the great basketball coach in UCLA, won more national champions than anyone else. The amazing coach. He told his players, I don't care about the wins. This isn't about the wins. This is about doing the fundamentals every day, consistently and persistently. Doing the fundamentals, mastering them, getting them perfect, and the wins will just come by themselves. And he won more national champions than anyone else in collegiate history. It's the same for you and I in our connection. We've got to just take care of the fundamentals. Are we building a relationship based on relevance? Are we, basing, are we building a relationship 
and establishing rapport based on something that's important to them or something that's important to us. Make no mistake, your agenda in connecting doesn't matter. Your agenda doesn't matter to them. So if you're trying to connect with them, you've got to be going with whose agenda? Theirs. What's every person, every person sitting here, every person standing here, every person that you will encounter today has one agenda in common. That they want to feel like they matter. If you make someone feel like they matter, trust me, your connection will skyrocket. But see, how do you make them matter? Well, it's not by asking what they do. So Bob, if you took away my leading question, what question can I ask? That's what I'm always asked. Well, then if I can't ask what do they do, then what can I ask? I say, well, you know, you need a bunch of questions. They are like, like arrows in your quiver. Just a bunch of them in that quiver of yours, ready to, to dispose at whatever time you need to based on the individual. So for one of the questions, I mean, here's one that I use a lot, and uh, it doesn't mean it has to work for you, but it works. Um, you can think and vary the question based on who you are and then who your client is or prospect is. One of the questions I ask is that, Terry, 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 when I walk up, I say, hey, Terry, um, you know, I just wanted to take an opportunity to come over and introduce myself and meet you. Um, but before I ever get to know what somebody does, I love to ask a question that tells me more about who they are. Would you mind? I've never had anyone say, nope, don't ask me about who I am. Never. <laughs> never. Right? So what I'll do is I'll say, well, Terry, you know, um, if you could get up tomorrow morning and wake up and go anywhere in the world, and I mean anywhere, that place that you've always wanted to go, go anywhere in the world, where would you go and who would you take with you? I would go to Australia. I'd take my best friend, Jason with me. Australia and your best friend Jason with yes. you. What part of Australia? I want to travel the whole, the whole part. <laughs> awesome. And um, and Jason, how long have you known Jason? Um, for 24 years. How did you guys become best friends? He, he was uh, second one of my friends. Okay. What do I know best about Terry now? What do I know? You know who her best friend is. Who her best friend is? What? She has a best friend named Jason, right? Well, what else? She loves Australia. She's always wanted to go there. What else? She's what? <laughs> She's not coming back. She's a good friend. She's a good She's friend. A friend. What else? Huh? I'm sorry. It excited her. It excited her. Yeah. Did you see the way she changed? Her physiology and everything changed. Right? Made her feel important because it's about her. It's not about what she does. So now here's the cool thing about that. I've learned more in the same 30 seconds than if I had asked, what do you do? Because if I learned, if I said, what do, I, what do you do, what would you say? I customer service rep working in call centers. Customer service rep working in call centers. Do I have any need for that right now? No? Okay, so that conversation is pretty much one and done. You see what I'm saying? We've got to change the questions. The quality of our connections will be based on the quality of the question. Keep asking the wrong question, you get what? The wrong answer. So I'm not going to lead with something that's just going to give me a flat result. I'm gonna leave with something that's going to actually matter to that person. Again, it's not about me, it's about that person. I want them to feel like they're being heard and they're being respected as a person. So in doing that, I've learned a lot of things. I've learned that she's a good friend, I've learned that her friend is Jason, I've learned that it's been many years, I've learned that she wants to go to Australia, she likes to travel, she's not afraid of airplanes, because she'll travel 15 hours in an airplane. I mean, I know a lot of things about her, right? That if I just asked what she did, I wouldn't know. We've gotta to learn to ask better questions. And in doing that, now, do you notice how one question led to the next? I didn't have to be thinking, write this down, do not be thinking about the next question. It's the kiss of death. Do not be thinking about the next question. I, l I let her tell me what the next question should naturally be. Oh, Jason, how long have you known Jason? That's just a natural question. It's not like, okay, uh, this one, let's ask it. It's natural. That's why it's authentic. That's why people respond differently. And if you're, don't, if you're not getting the responses you want, it's not because of them and it's not their fault. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistake, it's not their fault if they're not giving you the response you want. It's because you're asking the wrong question. It's your fault. It's your responsibility. I had a great professor named Tony Georgilis who taught in speech. 
And he says, you know, who, who's, whose responsibility is it if the message is not received properly? And half the class was divided. Half the class said, you know, it's, it's, it's the speakers. And the other half said, no, it's the, it's the audience. Because the audience wasn't listening and the audience wasn't paying attention. We came back to a general consensus at the end of the class that it's 100% the speaker's responsibility. It's your responsibility, Mr. Salesman, Mrs. Salesman. It's your responsibility as a friend. It's your responsibility as a parent. It's your responsibility as a business owner to make sure that your message is heard the way you want it to be heard and not the way that they're just going to receive it based on their preconceived ideas about who you are. You're going to have to break down some of those boundaries and some of those boundaries are simply there because they think you're going to sell them something. Are you going to sell them something? Yes. Absolutely. If you sell them nothing else than yourself, you've sold them something. And see, most people have a real problem with that. They have a real problem with selling themselves first. I say, you know what, I'd just rather sell myself first and talk to the people. And then, you know, if they want the product, they want the service, they want whatever I have to offer, hey, you know, we'll figure out a way to make that happen. But I'm not all consumed with that. I don't care. My What I care is this. And write this down. If you're not talking to enough people, I'll challenge you it's because you don't have enough belief in what you sell or provide. And I get a lot of people, if you don't, if you're not talking to enough people, it's because your your confidence level in what you sell or provide to others is not high enough. For example, if you had the cure to cancer, one in three people will be affected by cancer. If you had the cure to cancer, how many people would you tell about that cure? Everybody. Everybody, right? What if they didn't want to listen? Would you still tell them anyways? Yeah. Right. Why aren't you doing that with your product or service? It's because you don't have the same belief level about your product or service. It's because you're not committed at that level. And I've worked with some of the top salespeople in national companies all around the world, and yet I will tell them the same exact thing. The, the bottom line always boils down to belief. Why were you willing to go out and make 50 connections for $250, but you wouldn't do it for $7,000? It's because the belief was, oh, well, I know that the 250 is a guarantee. That's it. It, it, it. it boils down to something so simple that we just don't have a high enough confidence level about what we're selling. If you believed it was going to change your life, who has something that they believe will change their life, Some, somebody's life, their client's life? What do, you, what do you sell or provide? A better body. A better body. So you provide a better body. How do you do that? Okay, and that's going to change their life. Absolutely. Okay, so how many people do you tell about that every day? Everybody. Everybody. Well, everybody I can put my hands on. <laughs> okay, so what has your success been? 100%. In helping someone? Yes. Okay, so why are more people not doing that? Um... Here's the reason. Their belief in what you're telling them isn't absolute. Does that make sense? If their belief was absolute that it was going to change their life, how many would do it? Absolute, right? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. It's not absolute. Your confidence, make no mistake, whatever you sell or provide, your confidence must be, be trumping their bullshit. Their bullshit is all the reasons that they've given themselves to not ever take action. You know what I'm talking about? You know those things that you kept saying, yeah, I should do that, I wanted to do it, but you're not doing it? Here's why. Because somewhere in your inner game, it's not strong enough to support taking massive action right now. That's why when the doctor says, if you don't quit smoking, you are going to die, a higher percentage of people quit smoking. Not all of them, but a higher percentage quit smoking. Because it's an absolute. There's a confidence level that I better do this now, not six months from now. Write down L-O-D-I, Lodi. It's the law of diminishing intent. How many of you guys have ever heard that before? Law of diminishing intent, it says this. The longer the distance between the time you say you're gonna do something and the time you actually do it is the less likely you will ever do it to begin with. So if I say, you know what, I'm gonna start going to the gym today. As a matter of fact, I'm going right now, 24 hour fitness. What's the likelihood I'm gonna to go to the gym? Pretty likely, right? What if I say, you know, I'm going to go um, tomorrow, I'm going to start going to the gym. Less likely? Less likely. What if I say next week, I'm going to start going to the gym? Less likely. 
What do I say next month I'm going to start going to the gym? How about at the first of the year I'm going to start going to the gym? <laughs> right? It's, it's the law of diminishing intent kicking our ass on a daily basis. It's kicking the ass of your clients and your prospects too. Because they're sitting there going, you know, I, I really want to do that, um, but you know, I've got a trip plan and we're going to be on a cruise ship and I'm going to be eating like a pig and I really, you know, how about if I wait till we get done? I always say this, when somebody says they, will, they want to wait, I always say this. You know what? You don't wait till you have a six pack before you go to the gym. You go to the gym to get the six pack. Let's start exercising the muscle now. We've got to get to that point where we are so convinced about what we say and we do that it's going to change your life that our confidence about that trumps their bullshit. Because their bullshit is just that. It's just excuses. It's just reasons that they've justified in their mind in the past to not take action. And it's led them to right where they're at right now. Why they're not getting the result that they want. It's because they haven't taken the action that they needed to take. So, um, I want to close with this. I'm going to close with two things. Dr. David Cook says a great statement. Dr. David Cook is a sports psychologist. And he says this. He says, listen close. He says, <laughs> she's listening close. He says, every day I like to put myself in a place where I'm literally choking myself to death just to see how good I can really be. Are you doing that? Are you putting yourself in a place every day where you're choking yourself to death, where you're leaving it all on the table to see how good you can really be? And then another guy named Mike Littman, a success coach out of New York, makes a great statement. He says, every level of income demands a different you doesn't request it it demands it and I said you know Mike I like that but I want to change that I think that every level of life demands a different you every level of love every level of health every level of relationship every level of connection every level of contribution to give back to humanity every level is going to demand a different you it's not going to require it. it's going to demand it of you so Going forward, here's, here's what I like to do. I like to speak, but I always like to say, I want to stay in, in the conversation with those people that want to stay involved in the conversation. You know what I'm talking about? I want to stay involved in the conversation with people that really want to stay involved in that conversation. So here's what I always do. Um, I've got events coming up. I've got one coming up on November 20th. Yes. November 20th, and um, it's a free event. I would love for you guys to come. It's here. It's going to be here in Newport Beach area, uh, Costa Mesa area, and I would invite you to come. It's going to be three hours of where I'm really teaching some of the fundamentals about how to connect with people. So some of the stuff we learned today, um, kind of on steroids to help you do that. So we're gonna we're gonna do that um, on November 20th. I want to give you a card, um, Amber. You can see Amber. She'll give you a card. I I, I am kind of a tree hugger, so I don't want to just give away paper. But um, if you see her, she'll give you a card. It's just a free invitation. You don't have to do anything. Um, those of you that registered for this, um, we're supposed to get a link. For the ebook, 30 days to your next level, that's on that. Um, the, the link will be on there as well. Um, and uh, let's see, let's see. Um, the other, the other uh, thought is, if there's something that you heard today that you just go, you know, Bob, I need to step up my game. I need to raise the bar for myself. I need to set a new standard. I, I host an evening once a month called Next Level by Association. Everyone kept saying, Bob, how do you get to the next level? And I said, it's by the company you keep. How many of you guys heard of Jim Rohn? Jim Rohn says a great statement. He says, you are the average of the five people you spend the most amount of your time with. The average what? The average income? The average health? The average relationship? The average person who contributes? Do you think that people who contribute a million dollars or more a year to people are hanging out with different people than maybe you are? Do you think that you know gym rats hang out differently than where the, the, the people that are obese hang out? Yes, they just hang out differently. It doesn't mean one's wrong or one's right. It just means they hang out differently. So we've got to get that understanding. Who are we hanging out with? How are we associating ourselves with the right kind of people? One of the things I've been the most blessed with was um, the ability to connect with people at a very young age. You know, and, um, and and one of the greatest attributes that I've been given was the ability to meet with people and then to develop rapport and relationship with people so that it be it transcends just a meeting. And so Next Level by Association is this dinner that I host once a month where about 50 people get together. They're all committed at a very high level. Do you want to hang out with highly committed people or just kind of 
so so. Highly committed, right? So that's why every month I host this dinner and they, they, we all get together and then I bring in somebody from my Rolodex. I brought in Keith Ferrazzi who wrote Never Eat Alone, Who's Got Your Back. I brought in uh, Les Brown, um, probably the number two or three motivational speaker in the world. I brought in uh, Jarek Robbins. I brought in uh, uh, Glenn Morshower, I played Aaron Pierce on the show 24. I brought in these people and they come in and they sit down and have dinner with us and they share with us about how they got to their next level and then what their next level is now and how they're what the obstacles are in front of them and how they're going to overcome those. So when you start associating with those kind of people on a consistent and persistent basis, you start to get consistent and persistent differently result, different results. So um, if that's something that you're interested in, uh, talk to Amber as well. But I'd love to see you guys on November 20th. If you can't make that, I do one uh, every other, uh, about once a month. And um, it's about connecting. And then I do breakthrough. Uh, if you're just feeling stuck, um, talk to Amber, talk to myself. Uh, maybe I can help you with that as well. And um, other than that, I'd like to thank you guys for your time. Uh, you know, in light of all the circumstances, you guys have been amazingly attentive. And I really appreciate that. Uh, it says a lot about the caliber of person that you are to be able to do that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so, so Bob is going to stick around so you guys can... Well, let's let Bob... Bob. What we usually do right afterwards, because we still have some time, is we let them ask you some Oh, questions. great, sure. So because it means a lot to them. A lot of times they just wait for you to have that opportunity. So get your minds thinking about what kind of questions you'd like to ask Bob. Um, I, real quick, I'm going to ask you about this Tuesday, November 20th. Is that a morning event? It's a morning, 9 to 12. Sorry, okay, great. And, and do they need to go on the website? To, how yes, do, how they'll, do they they'll do go that? to the website and they'll register. So there's a place um, on the or website you can just, to register. You can, yeah, because we need to collect their email okay. so that you'll get uh, follow-up emails to remind you and all that stuff and give you all the details of the So event. for those of you that have the interest and you're not positive about your schedule, right now I would ask for you when we pass this card to exchange one of these for your business card so that Amber and Cindy will be able to follow up with you appropriately. Um, I found a lot of times people think something with good intention and then what happens is the event comes and goes. You guys know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially me. I mean, we just had that conversation this morning. I have a tendency of over committing. It's because I want to help so many people that I get disfocused of what my purpose was. You guys get that? I also want to remind everybody those little cards that I passed out. The purpose and the intentions. Does somebody have one on them? The little cards that we passed out earlier to all the circles? Real quick, I want to show one. So the purpose of this is really important. So it's the same thing that Bob's talking about, right? It's not just passing about your cards to 100 people or 1,000 cards. When I was in network marketing, that's what I found. You, you run around so quickly to get to as many meetings as possible and to meet as many people as possible, and you come with a stack of cards. It means nothing, okay? The people that you meet, if you don't make a relationship, you wasted your time and their time. Your past clients, I say the exact same thing. How many of you have a past client that you haven't spoken to for over a year? Or a friend? Or who, somebody you highly value? I'm going to say it again. I say it every time. Start with your top 10. But if you had 100 people that like you, know you, and trust you, would you really be looking for a job or a, a new connection? So if that's the case, you need to step up and at least go to this next free event that Bob has because this is where it starts. It starts with who am I? Who are you? and getting what your gifts are. So when you just discover what your gifts are and you match that with the skills that Bob teaches you, it's a win-win. You're taking your life to the next level. So again, if you've met somebody here and you liked them enough to give them your card, then mark on here. Were you gonna call them? Were you gonna email them? Were you gonna connect with them on LinkedIn? Let's start playing to the next level and that's why Bob's here. Bob's bringing his heart and soul. He, yes, he lives here, but he travels all over the world and he's here today. That means there was a reason in the universe that you were brought here today. Pay attention to what's going on. We get so busy that we miss opportunities. This is not an opportunity to be missed. He's given you a free event to go to for three hours that could change your life. So with that, Bob, Thank you're you. so amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So we're taking questions now. Question? Anybody? Yes. Can okay, you guys repeat it? But you're yeah, leading with you're leading 
with the question of what they do, which is the least important. It's who they are that's the most important. So if you're leading with the, that question, your, your, cert, your conversation from that point on will always be tainted by the, the least important and the most important will be overshadowed. I'll Anything ask else? the next question. Okay. So, so Bob, I, I kind of have a small glimpse of who you are. I've had some opportunities to 